Hey everybody, it's the Toddcast Podcast. I'm your host, Todd Basinger. Hello. Levi is a little uh, faint of voice tonight after yelling. And I titled miscellaneous yelling. I yelled most of my set. And oh my god, your voice really is shot. I lost my voice. <laughs> Yelling most of my side. Tom Galloway is watching. Tom, don't you have a baby to be attending to? Do I have to call child services? <laughs> It'll happen eventually. We're gonna let Todd. How's she doing, Tom? We can't see her answer, but well, actually, give me my uh, my laptop. Yeah, I'm gonna let. Get Todd in on this conversation oh, here. If we can. Tom said LOL. <laughs> uh, we... Oh, there we go. Now we're thinking. Does this pull apart a little? Oh, I know the side pulls apart. Uh, maybe not. Hey, do you have a thing that could prop this up? We have to get Todd. Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We did it. There we go. How does he look? Todd Basinger, everybody. Todd Basinger. There he is. He is, uh, he is here with us tonight. Todd said, I saw a picture of Tom's kid. It definitely has his diabetes. <laughs> I didn't know that was hereditary. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So how, did the, the, how did the mic sound? Sorry. It's very loud. Very loud? Hey, Tom, how did the mic sound? God, yeah, this is such an unprofessional podcast. <laughs> we, have no, we have no idea how Let's to ask do. the audience how we're doing <laughs> for the next half an hour. Are we okay? Are we doing fine? What do you guys think? I feel like it's not as good as it could be. <laughs> it's never as good as it could be. <laughs> How do you think you did tonight? I thought you did great hosting and with your set. I, w- I wouldn't advise doing yelling based material because you're going to fuck up your voice pretty bad. You'd be like an old NBA coach who has to get throat surgery. Cause... We had a great game! Yeah. It was a good game! Yeah. Everyone played really hard! No, I. But I love yelling. <laughs> it's so much fun to yell about nothing. <laughs> It's the no. It was just it, it was a combination of things. I shouldn't. Um, I had pizza before I came here, so like well, that, that's that's what did dairy and grease combined with yelling uh, is not a good idea. So you're leaving. Okay, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> did you forget her name there for a second? No, I just wanted to say it as like. <laughs> Weird as I possibly could. I don't know where she's awesome. No, uh, I it, it went good. Um, the first part of my set was improvised, and then the last, and then the two written jokes that I did, I wrote last night. So considering that, uh, it went pretty well. Yeah. Yours went really well. Your new jokes went well. I didn't think so. <laughs> well, I, you know, you're your toughest critic. I don't know. I thought I had the. There were two of them that I thought were gonna work, and sort of worked. And then the last one, obviously, I've done before, and that one I'm still trying to perfect. I think enough people have probably seen the video, so I might be a little bit over-explaining in the beginning, mm. you know, where I could just sort of jet through that part. It, I was going to give you that note of, like... Most people have seen it, or I can just give the cliff notes and within probably, you know, yeah. seconds, 20 seconds, they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and then, well, it's it's... You get kind of lost in the explanation. Right, you forget yeah. that a joke is coming, and so it, it kind of yeah, takes I, you out of that. I felt that definitely. So yeah, I shortening it up. The joke is solid. Though. Like that joke is really funny. Yeah, I like the. I mean, I I like the way it escalates. And 
<laughs> it flows really nicely. I think it, the examples that you give, the hardest thing with doing examples is like having them progress in a way that makes it feel worth continuing to talk about the subject. Yeah. And I think I think that joke really does like well. That was the yeah. I appreciate it. That was the. Hey Robert. Hey Robert, we're trying to do a podcast over here. Could you be quiet for a second? Thank you. You don't have to stop talking. You you're just at, need... you're at like a seven right now. We need you to turn it down to like a two and a half. Two and a half, maybe two. two. We'll see how two and a half goes, but I might ask you to turn it down even further, so be prepared <laughs> for my next accusation of loudness. Thank you, Robert. Anyways. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> so... What were we talking about? Oh, the joke. Yeah, yeah we were I, talking about the joke. I wanted it to be... I wanted it to be sort of like a rule of three joke that progressively gets worse, but I also wanted to splice in the, like, shit that he did that was horrible. Yeah. So then it justifies what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise it's just like you're shouting insults. You know, and, and, I, and then I kind of take it back right away by being like, yeah, just a little creativity. That's all yeah. I, you know, just say. Hey, like, yeah, that definitely, because it's, yeah, that's, you can feel some people pulling back. When, but I, I love, I love manipulating like energies like that where you yeah. put people into a weird place and then you pull back right away and like give them, you know, you let them feel like, okay, everything's all right. It's Absolutely. Not, you know. yeah. No, I agree. That's, uh. Which originally that joke was, that joke just ended with, I mean, I never told it on stage like this, but I didn't really know what to do at the end after I had like sodomized him with a pool cue and, uh -huh. and then I thought of like, you know, just a little creativity, that's yeah. all I'm asking. And that like totally just brought it back to where I wanted it, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the perfect callback. And the amount of space that you had between your last example and just a little creativity was perfect as well. Because that pause needs to be like a certain amount of time, otherwise it's not as funny. Yeah. But it was, it was really funny, I liked it a lot. I appreciate it. It's, it's one that I, I'm going to will to work whether or not it works right away. Sure. But... What the fuck? <laughs> oh, we are live. Okay. okay cool. So, yeah, I... Shut the fuck up, me. I feel like it went well. Um, for those who weren't here, Tom... Yeah, uh, Tom. The fuck, man. I... I had, well, you, you had the idea. I shouldn't say I had, because I didn't come up with the idea, but you had everybody write down on a piece of paper um, different premises for me to, like, improvise on. I thought uh, it went well. For hosting. Like, you know, I, I have trouble, <clears throat> it's like trying to write roast jokes for everybody f every week for, like, a year is very difficult, because eventually you can only make fun of somebody's dead parents like you, you do that enough times yeah. and you just can't think of any more the ground jokes. is only so fertile yeah so i think maybe if we can sort of supplement what i'm doing with just some improv if you'd be interested in doing that, that yeah would be, i'd love to do that you know because i that's that's the part of hosting that i dread is just like trying to come up with the fucking jokes yeah because i know i don't have the charisma to host a show in a that'll make it in that I'll, where i'll be adding something to the show without you know like i feel like i have to write stuff otherwise i'm not really adding a sure. to the show i'm just a guy coming up here and being like hey i gave it up for your last comedian here's your next comedian yeah and i i don't want to just be like a net zero or a net negative on the show i want to add something to it so yeah, and that's kind of the first two times I went up, I just kind of said uh, an improvised line, and the show was, like, kind of dragging. And yeah. then Dude, the I, 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 so I, I pumped as much energy as I could into it, and that seemed to help at least a little bit yeah. to where the, the mood kind of picked up a little bit. But it's definitely... 
the attitude in which he presents um, the show is very important to like how the show itself is going to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely. On days when I'm not feeling it, the show tends to drag. The show drags regardless because it's just a trudge. <laughs> but it, it Both could. Mics are rough. It can still be better it. or worse. Right, um, because of the host or yeah, in yeah. spite of the host. And so, I don't know. It, if it, if the if the people watching it see that you're having a good time, they're more likely to have a good time themselves. Right. So it's uh, it's more a matter of just putting your best foot forward. Uh, yeah. And. I feel like I can muster that for my own set, but for <laughs> when other people get involved, it's hard for me to be enthusiastic on behalf of other people. But I'm just like over bubbling with anxiety about people not being happy with me. Yeah, me <laughs> so too. I can I can I can forge ahead a little bit. Well, it has the opposite effect on me if I if I start worrying about that shit. You kind of. Right. Hey, hey Robert. Robert! Robert, you're in a 2.5, we're gonna have to... You remember the say. thing that we talked about earlier? The thing about you shutting up for a second? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... That's still in play. <laughs> it didn't stop, and it will continue to not stop for the next... For, for the, the duration, duration of the duration this podcast. Of the podcast. I need you to not, <laughs> like right, like on a scale of, of ten, one to not, of please stop to not, I need you to not. <laughs> there is no keep going on this scale, it goes straight to not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I love that voice because it's mean and also charming. <laughs> like it's it's <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's just it's just silly enough to whatever you say is not mean anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little Chris Kaufman. <laughs> little Chris, Chris Kaufman. Oh, Chris Kaufman's watching. Interesting. Oh, he is. He has been. These boys have been busy. What are they talking about here? What is what's what's the uh, scoop? What's the, what's the story, Wishbone? Well, we have. Uh, I don't know when this starts and when it ends. I'm assuming it starts at the bottom. Tom says, "I want to know what the other people are talking about." Well, that's that makes one of us. That's just too uh, bad. Debut comedy page, which I'm assuming is Chris, says, You were a real Sam Kinison up there tonight, Levi. <laughs> Tom said, What was the joke? Tom said, Levi forgot her name. Tom said, LOL. Tom said, She is perfect. Uh, I'm not following this. But yeah, I, I might be reading it in the wrong direction. It's not important. But thank you? <laughs> no one's, there's one person watching. Yeah, it's fine. So yeah, um, yeah, I think it overall went well. My voice has started to come back, thanks to the tea, but... Oh, wait, <laughs> Very nice. Uh, what about you, Todd? How'd the two go for you? Well, I thought it went pretty well. I'm just a little old good for nothing. Todd Basin in your head. Trying to play the fundamentals and stand up comedy. Are you? <laughs> I will end you, Magic Johnson. I like how you went straight forward. Oh, Polar, are you good for nothing? You ever done a good thing in your life? Huh? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is probably been our best podcast so far. Probably. <laughs> It's just so fucking sad. Uh, so, what is... <laughs> so, no, that's, that's a good time. What is your opinion on neckties? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say suicide. No, I know where you stand on suicide. <laughs> I'm 
different, you know, it's just give or take, it depends on the day. <laughs> what, what do you think my opinion on suicide is? Uh, that... <laughs> Hold the phone, let's figure was, this out. Here. I was gonna say that it... <laughs> that it depends on the situation, but... No, I, I feel... As a last resort... <laughs> Probably. More like a first resort. That's you know. true. No, I think it's uh, I think it's up to the person. <laughs> Everyone has the right to commit suicide. I agree. Yeah. Now, now that we've established yeah, our stance on this I polarizing I prefer topic. that people would do it in their workplace. That would be the ideal place to commit like, suicide. Like as a social example? Like, if, well, let me take that back. Okay. If, it's, if that's the reason that they're unhappy is because of their job, well, whatever the reason is that you're unhappy, you should commit suicide in the, like, hang yourself in the vicinity of whatever that is. You have is. to be looking it in the eyes, you know. Right. I think that's the, the, the G way to go out. Okay. Just to be like, you fired me from this job? There you go, right what, there. What if Carry the that reason, thought around. For what the is the life. reason that... You're killing yourself. This is such a horrible because thing to say. What if the Jesus reason Christ. that you're killing yourself is because you hate carousels? Do you just lay down and let those ponies? Do you kill yourself in front of the carousel and let the children watch? I think you kill yourself and taxidermy yourself into a Ooh. into no, a you horse. Put, you that, put your ashes part of, part of a ride that. Kids can ride on this dead town. Okay, body. so now you're not only. This is getting uh, fucking dark, right? You're not yeah. only dead, but you're also being a benefit to society. I enjoy that. <laughs> to find benefit to society. That's a, little, that's a little bit of a stretch. People like carousels, <laughs> <laughs> they keep making them. People must enjoy them. You're benefiting society. Oh, God. <laughs> Got yep. dark quick. Yeah. yeah All of a sudden, I got opinions about suicide. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should commit suicide. No, Be probably clear. not. Pro just don't. You got one. Unless life. I mean, unless you really want to. Unless you but, really want to. In like, which case. But well, other a lot, than of the, a lot of the people who commit suicide are not fully mentally there. Like, there's a lot of former <clears throat> NFL players, for instance, who. Like commit suicide with CTE because their That's brain true. is literally just so fucked that every second of their life they're like, I could jump off that building right now. Yeah. And they're just like so down that road. Like it's it's not even that life has just shat on them since day one. It's like they just all something's fucked up chemically in their brain and it just makes them want to kill themselves. Which if that's the case, uh, then we should stop playing football. We should. <laughs> we should yeah, we should probably stop banging our heads together incessantly because that will... For sport. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not a good idea. Where is the line uh, that you cross before um, before it just becomes like gladiatorial combat? That's interesting because that's in a way that's essentially what it is. Yeah. It's, just... it's, a, it's a large... Uh, it's it's poor. it's a large stadium where people come, and now it's televised. But the the structure itself is built in the way that a coliseum is built, where you sit on a in a just a pillar of enjoyment, watching down on people destroying each other. I know, and we look back on that on, on you know lions and and, and shit. They're like so that. barbaric. Yes, yeah, savages that yeah. would watch this entertainment. Granted, movie. they're not killing themselves we, in front of you. We put them in pads. Yeah, and that makes it better. You know. That's, well, uh, to be fair, gladiators had armor. So it's the same fucking thing. It's it's, it's not pretty the same thing. Because we make the well. Did they pay the gladiators? No. Wait well? a second. I think it is the same thing. <laughs> I just get really <laughs> aggressive about well, it. Well, it's what not... What is the difference between a lion and a GE? <laughs> it's not like instant death type of deal. No. But I mean, were they paid yeah. handsomely? I'm assuming they were. Uh, they got to live. That's it? So was it essentially you got in trouble, 
Um, they fun. were the the person who won the gladiatory combat was looked at essentially as a a statute of society. So they were um, they were given luxury. Um, so same as NFL players. Yeah. Multi million guaranteed contract. Yeah. Um, there's just less grapes involved. Oh, we need to bring back the grapes. Yeah. Gotta get those grapes back. That's what. That's all I want out of life is to just sit in a robe and be fed grapes. Like that. That sounds incredible. <laughs> sounds a little weird. Man. Well. Make sure I keep grapes. Up. <laughs> Don't keep grapes in my uh, refrigerator next time you come over. Well, f clearly you haven't tried it, <laughs> and I feel like you're judging before. It's, I mean, obviously, I'm being facetious, it's not gladiatorial combat, but it feels enough it, like it that it makes me uncomfortable. It's very questionable in terms of the, the majority of the people who are participating come from low socioeconomic background. A lot of them are African American, and they get drafted, which is... Uh, sort of move as far away from that as possible and trying to fight that as best as we can. I don't know if it's flaws or if it's just we are ape people. Like we are, like we have the fight or flight instinct in our head that where if someone makes fun of you, your first instinct, if, if taught nothing, your first instinct would be, well, I want to fight this person or I want to get away from this person. Yeah. Like we have these weird built-in reactions, like emotional reactions to things mm -hmm. that can lead us in weird directions. But the the ideal... The ideal and you want world. you want to become a master of those instincts, basically. Yeah. In well, you want to be able to filter them before you do them, right. or you want to be able to create a temperance within yourself that allows you to not have to think about it and react in the appropriate way. Like that's that's ideal. That's the ideal situation is to be able to instinctively to to program an instinct in yourself to defuse a situation. This conversation has gotten so abstract. I have no idea what we were <laughs> what we were originally talking about. Uh, we were talking about NFL players and gladiatorial combat and how they're similar. Yeah, but yeah. The, the, there's there's uh, and it's not the the big misconception out there is that it's concussions that are the problem. Like we got to be more careful about concussions. It's like no, it's the Subconcussive hits. It's the everyday knocking, just knocking of heads every yeah. single play, just play after play after play after play. They had some study of uh, some high school team that showed that I, I probably talked about this before. That showed that um, the players that actually got concussions had less brain damage because they had to sit out for two weeks or whatever than the players who were you know participating every single day so yeah, it's a weird dilemma because I love football mm -hmm. I played football when I was you know sixth grade through sophomore year of high yeah, school as well. um, I, I mean I enjoy it I love the strategy of it I love the the art of drawing up like a really awesome play and game planning and stuff like that is is interesting to me but um yeah it's weird because there's a lot of former nfl players that are off their fucking rocker or they kill themselves junior seau the dude on uh, the bears i forget his name um but there's a lot of players that you know end up killing themselves and it's yeah. just like you you facilitated this by being a fan of, you know. Well, you people. you rather than I don't know. It's it's a. But how much? I, I, that's that's my argument for the NFL is just be upfront with the people. Like the football in general, we just need to be like be honest with people. And be like, hey, you're probably gonna have some damage. You're, you, yeah. Here's the worst case scenario of what could happen to you. You know, here's the, you know, what could happen to your family if something, you know, if you 
go down that road or whatever. Like you just need to be upfront and transparent about it, but they want to hide behind, well, we have new special helmets or we have a new way of tackling that doesn't cause brain damage or whatever. And they keep trying to, you know, punt the ball down the field and try to, you know, to, no pun intended to, uh, just, I, I don't, I don't know what they're, they're, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to cover themselves for when that class action lawsuit comes down the road where all the players get together and go, Hey, uh, can we talk about this whole brain damage thing? They're going to be yeah. like, well, look at all the wonderful things that we did for all the players. Yeah. We had, you know, heads up football taught in grade school and we had, you know, all these different helmet adjustments that we made to yeah. mitigate the effects of concussions and we thought we were doing the right thing so and it's were. like e even if it's not football i mean football is is at a level be it's that's it's that's so di popular that's different other... because it is a sport that people tune in to watch yeah. and so many people tune in to watch yeah. but the fact of the matter is when you're young um like uh a little kid into your teens, you're doing you're doing stupid stuff all the time that's going to get you hurt. Like it's you're you're not going to take away the ability to get hurt, but the fact that we're kind of like training, I don't know. It it just feels weird to me. I don't have a reasonable explanation for it other than the fact that I it 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 just feels. Wrong. It just feels icky yeah. to be a part of it. I know yeah. what you mean, yeah. There's so many guys that just get fucking blasted. And it, and it's not that's not the worst of it. They, no. you know, that's not what's causing the issues, but there's so many guys that just get fucking destroyed out yeah. there. And you're like, oh, oh God, why, what, what the hell? You're going to have to talk to Did you get that from Jeff's now? house? Yes, I did. Oh, dude. Is it good? Is it his uh, blueberry yeah. cream ale? Dude, it's fucking great. Yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be like poison. I thought he was gonna poison us. Oh shit! Yeah, it does. It does give me a little bit of. What? My bad. A little bit of an ejaculation there. Great. It's really good. It doesn't usually happen that fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's never it never happens like this. It's all just fault. It is. It is tasty. Yeah. I don't know if it aged or you know if it it was kind of weird or anything, but it, you know with the. Uh, I know he made that batch a while ago, but it's really good. You want to try it? I mean, it's Tony's. Thank you. <laughs> I, know, I love how I'm just offering your drink to people. It's okay. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, not so pricey prostitute. <laughs> Can I have a little bit? I'm gonna try. That's smooth. We'll sip a little bit. That's more blueberry than I expected. Right, and it comes in late in the game. That's good. That's that a really, really good beer. That I is love solid. It. Very good indeed. So how Very was, nice, Jeff. I heard you guys talking about something as I came in, and I was curious. Yeah, we were talking about um, the NFL and how it's kind of similar to like old barbaric gladiator shit, where a bunch of people get into an arena and watch some fucking dude yeah. like, kill himself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of a weird dilemma with that. And it's and. I mean, I don't. I have a question. I was going to think. Do you think MMA is more barbaric than football, or do you think it's less barbaric? Than oh, football? it's cl it's clearly more barbaric, but it's um, it's not as. Is the difference between fighting and playing a game? Well, there's less. I mean, you can you can break your leg, you can break your nose, you can get your arm fucking arm barred and popped out of its socket or whatever. Yeah. I think there's, and there's obviously a lot of punching and stuff like that, but I think it's considerably less than the everyday just knocking of helmets every single time you block someone, every single time you get tackled, every single time you hit the ground. Yeah. The, the, you, don't, you don't get injured to the point where the ref comes in and goes, no, that's it, that's it, you're out. Yeah. Like, you yeah. just... No, the life... <laughs> um, the amount of hits you take as an NFL left guard is considerably more than what you would take as an MMA well, fighter. Look, look at their careers, too, because, like, people that play football do it their whole life. They're taking well, their whole life. But, they, you know, a good NFL career is, like, yeah. 10 years, 12 years, or whatever. Well, I mean, like, think about how oh, they get well, started. Oh, well, yeah, and then high school, yeah, and high school, and college, like and pro. So they, they're taking all those hits their whole life, and then they retire, and 
at like they, 34, 30, right, whatever. And they and can't then, read, and they got like a twitch, and they're, they're all fucked up. Sometimes and if you look at like any kind of a fighter, I mean, while their career is getting punched in the head, boxers are yeah, worse it's than a MMA. lot. It's a lot shorter periods of time, so they get to work out and train for this one fight, and they have a career of maybe like it's not you're not fights. You're not fighting every single yeah. week on Sunday for sixteen weeks in a row, yeah. basically. Well, the the art of fighting as well is really beautiful. Like yeah, the, I mean the the yeah the the art of de- like the strategy and like, the, the like the actual art form of jujitsu and karate and like all Bruce that. Bruce Lee is one of my heroes. Just it's just a lot in of general, people's heroes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm not. <laughs> I wasn't saying that to be unique. It's just like you know who I like, Bruce Lee. <laughs> Top you know that. I like. Martin yeah. Luther King Jr. Have you seen Ong Bak? Yes. Ong Bak is like the greatest fucking kung fu movie of all time. Yeah. This guy does his own stunts and there's like no special effects beyond no, it's slow pretty motion and shit. But just like everything that Bruce Lee was, not only his fighting, but his uh, his philosophies, the way that he spoke, the things that he stood for, I, I very much admire. Um, and the the art of uh, deconstructing another person and calculating what they're gonna do, um, and it it is like a really brutal dance, and it's it's an art form in itself. Learning lot, to fight. A lot of how, like you, you what you said though with like the philosophy that was what a lot of what he had to to offer over other martial artists is yeah. that they're trying to get shots of boobies they're trying to get good fights Bruce Lee was trying to preach and change the world and shit he was just a solid dude. solid dude yeah he, he was this one here is for Bruce Lee <laughs> he yeah he was, he's just an immensely interesting person fascinating person but the yeah, just just the art of fighting in general is to me more of I don't know. There is there's something beautiful about well, and this is gonna sound really freaking pretentious when I say this, and I know that it sounds pretentious, but even a mushroom cloud has beauty to it. Like the like there's there's a beauty to the way that like it looks beautiful. Yeah. And it's the most deadly thing. It's fascinating. And it, it, that that nuance is there like everywhere. It's not just, it's not just fighting. It's not just the NFL. It's not just a bomb. It's it's there. Like a, I don't know. There. Jackie Chan said something in the, the Karate Kid. <laughs> The one with Jaden Smith, uh-huh. where he said, uh, ev- everyone does Kung Fu. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, he, he boiled it down to just, like, there, there's a thing that you do that nobody else does that makes you you, mm-hmm. and that is your Kung Fu. Yeah. Well, they, well, the original Karate Kid, what was the quote? It was, uh, why, why, do you, why do you learn to fight so I don't have to fight? Which makes a lot of sense. At least to me, that makes a lot of sense. Of like, I learned to fight so that people, so that I never have to fight. That does, I mean, it's a it's a pretty haiku thing, but like, that's well, cause not the, logistical at all. Like, if you learn yeah, to fight, you're gonna a fight. Haiku thing. Yeah. Well, the it comes in five syllables, seven syllables, and then five syllables. I can't read, Ryan. God damn it. <laughs> The fists hit harder when they come from your soul, man. Man. (laughs) Be like water, friend. Um, (laughs) The, uh... (laughs) But, uh... Poetry slam night. Yeah. (laughs) But there... But the philosophy behind that is if you learn how to fight and you learn how to fight well enough, there is a level of fighting to where anybody else that is trying to fight you, you don't have to fight. You can just stop them from fighting you. Yeah. 
You ever see when uh, on Fear Factor when the uh, one of the contestants tried to fight Joe Rogan? I love that. I watch that YouTube clip all yeah. the time. Where <laughs> Joe Rogan has like twenty years of jujitsu yeah. experience. Yeah. This guy comes at him and he basically just like grabs his head. Or what did he do? He like got him in a. Well, they separated him after a second, but Rogan totally fucking octopus around this yeah. dude. He, he just, just, just got him shot. into a hold, and it was just yeah. like, you're not doing shit against me. Yeah, and then once they yeah. pulled him apart, he was telling the dude, like, are you out of your fucking mind? Like, you're on my show. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's. And that that's kind of what it is, is he didn't have to fight the guy. He was just, he's so knowledgeable about the art of fighting that he yeah, could just, like, yeah. stop you from fighting. Knowledgeable, he's educated, and, didn't, and that's, he didn't have to rip his head off. No. He, like, he and locked that's, him up and made him look like an idiot. I think that fighting used in that context is really beautiful. Like, being able to um, negate something with your ability to... You know what's weird? Something. The it's... way that you say that, so I hold one, the only thing I've ever been good at. <laughs> the only thing Smoking I ever wanted. Weed. No, that's, that's like breathing, dude. That's just, a, that can't even count that as a, something I work for. <coughs> but the only thing I ever won, when I was a kid, when I lived in Fresno, California, like in, in the ghetto, I lived in this big apartment complex. And all the little kids wanted to have this fighting tournament one time because I don't remember who had gone out and bought a plastic like WWF belt like sure. with the shiny gold shit on it. Yeah. So we had this little fighting tournament and like I, I'm the oldest of five kids. So like I know I'm going to get in trouble if I smack somebody upside the head and they got to run home bleeding. So like what I did, I, I won. But just because I kept putting people on the ground and I'd sit on their chest and like make them tap out, and I was a fat kid, so I, I won. That is how most kid fights end: is just somebody sits on sitting on somebody else. Sits on yeah. someone else. Like get off! You can't keep cheating. I'm like fuck you! I I just want it. I want that belt. Do you still have that belt? No, I sold it for weed. Pokemon cards. Oh. This is this is pre weed. Oh okay. Pre Pokemon cards, the weed for little kids. <laughs> pre Wii Tony. And pretending to be Dragon Ball Z characters as we fight. Oh! God. I got. <laughs> well, I don't even remember what they. I got all energy cards! <laughs> my Poke Dealer totally chipped me. <laughs> One of the funniest things I ever saw in my entire life. I was in high school, and it was like a uh, walk relay for life. It's like a walk for cancer. Mm -hmm. And it was at the high school track. Everyone's walking around, you know, just you do 100 laps and you save kids from cancer somehow. I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it started raining. So, every, and it, like, not just raining, it was like thunderstorming outside. And so they brought everyone into the gym and we're all sitting there. Everyone's just bored out of their mind. And then two, two of the seniors went into the middle of the basketball court and just started having an imaginary Dragon Ball Z fight where they're just going like and then the other guy goes that's like, incredible and they're just acting it out like like choreographed like fake fighting and it was the, one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen oh, it was so impromptu that it was just where amazing. are these people now? I want to meet those two prison <laughs> probably I don't know. Dragon Ball Z. But that was when I was like a sophomore, so it was like anything the seniors did. It was like, oh my yeah. god, they're so cool. I just want to <laughs> hang out with them. I love them so much. Can I sit at your table? Have you ever seen like backyard wrestling? Where like, people use like whatever the fuck they have mattresses. And, yeah. Like, like the... <laughs> yeah, like I had like, a... Like the old PC video games? Kinda, yeah. Prank back well backyard base. But like people <laughs> <laughs> made a wrestling no, people fucking fight with Wait, whatever child versions of WWE yeah. wrestlers. They pretend it's fucking raw and <laughs> that was a dumb like they just they just like sell all the other person's moves and stuff like that. Well like fuck <laughs> fucking when I was a kid I had a buddy that had like a backyard and then uh, uh, like a back porch where their 
upper level of his house had a door rather than just windows so you could open that door and get like a running start and jump and fucking flying like elbow drop on <laughs> motherfuckers like that were just unsuspecting you, you know what I mean like you could leave the match like hey guys I'm, I'm taking a piss real quick and let so everybody you fight so other children yeah. <laughs> for fun for fun I got bodies you ever done like actual wrestling like Roman Greco well, oh, just like with your friends or something. I never knew how big of a pussy I was until I wrestled my friends. And they just, <laughs> just fucking pinned me in. There's like, no greater test. Just like three seconds. Then no. I'm doing all this dirty shit, like spitting on them. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, at one time, my roommate in college tackled me for no reason. He was all drunk and he was trying to like pin me. And I was like, well, I would chew in my mouth, so I'll just give him one. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's that's a dirty shot. That is. You gotta you gotta fight to the death though, man. <laughs> Hit him with everything. We go hard in the streets. One time I was dating this girl that she she talked really tough and she told me that before You're I fight met her. Girls, Tony. No. Okay, that's, that's no, lower than she told me you that she used to fight bastard. girls for money. Right, like in high school. So like, I was like, was it like, like a, the girls gave her money was after it like being a, beaten. A porn thing? I think I've seen that video. <laughs> I don't even fucking know. But she told me she used to fight girls for money. How? And then the spell she cast fucked up my mic. And fucking, I was thinking one day like, what if I'm not home? What if like somebody kicks in the door and comes to like take my shit and she's the only one there, you know? So like, I told her like, all right. I'm gonna rush you. Do whatever you gotta do. I just wanna see. Ass. She, not even a kick, she hit me like with a fucking square, regular ass punch, but like quicker, like if. Wah! Yeah, she just, I got up with a bloody nose, like, all right, you're, you're good. You're good. You passed my test. We're fine. But I need to know how that economy works. How was yeah, she getting I, money I, for fighting? <laughs> Is there like a like, like a girls that would just like other girls would be like, and then that girl would be like, that was impressive. Here's twenty bucks, or yeah. was it like an actual sanctioned event? With was it like school? a was it like a cockfight with a she, bunch of Mexicans hanging out in the background going? Eh, she, 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 each got, other. Got, she was strings the attached girl. to the girls' be like, <laughs> legs. I so need every somebody time smack the fuck up, go oh. push that bitch down the stairs, and she. Do it because she oh, was a really? bitch. Oh, so she was a she was she a was bitch. A hired girl. <laughs> a bitch, a hit man, hit woman, yeah. Yeah. hit hit H hired hitter, hit woman. <laughs> hey, Robert, <laughs> Robert, you're doing great. Yeah, I, you I, I, I just want to tell you, you you've been doing great. Yeah. In terms of the being quiet. I right? would reward you for your good behavior, be but nice there was two other times around. where I had to give you a verbal <laughs> scolding, so I feel like it's... <laughs> I, I feel like one right doesn't make two bads better. I'll bust my head around your fucking knee. I, <laughs> <laughs> that's, the it too. that's the weirdest aggressive insult I've ever heard. Have you ever seen Kung Pao? Chicken? No, no there's a movie called <laughs> Chinese Kung Pao. food. Yes, Keisha, I love you so much, Keisha. I have seen it. I just wanted to be an asshole. <laughs> you were an asshole. Keisha saved me right there. Thank you. So, Thank there's you. that guy hey. that doesn't know Thank how to fight. You. You're welcome. <laughs> there's that guy that doesn't know how to fight, and he fights backwards. Like, he thinks losing is winning, so he throws his face <laughs> into your <laughs> fist and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, every hit you land, he's laughing and thinking he's what? scoring somehow. What is the movie? Is it a is is it like a? I think it might be a Flight of the Concords movie where it's Space Jam. Jermaine uh, Clement. <laughs> Dude, you gotta fight him. No, I promise. I promised I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do hamster style. <gasps> and then it flashbacks. <laughs> His dad is reading the paper, and he's sit, they're all sitting at the breakfast table, and he's like eating Cheerios, and he goes. Dad, I don't think I'm going to do hamster style anymore. His dad goes, mm. <laughs> And it flashes back to my day. What is that, Keisha? Is it a Flight of the Concords movie? I don't think so. No? Is it a Tim and Eric sketch? The Tyler Perry something. You know what? <laughs> Medea goes to Chaco. <laughs> Tim 
Tim Allen, am I right? <laughs> I just heard to get punched after this podcast. I've been saying all kinds of what is, horrible shit. I think it might be a Tim and Eric bit. Dude, mm-hmm. sorry to sidetrack, but you, this, so this fucking like tweaker guy comes in here tonight. I don't know what he was doing, but he's oh, you saw the guy, the right? guy in the corner. Yeah, yeah. He, he comes in and he's all fucking weird. Well, he, he's, he yeah, and he goes in the back for a second, kind of looks, and then and then he goes over by where Robert was sitting and sits down in his chair and then kicks his drink over. <laughs> And I'm, yeah, I'm like, in the middle of the show. Yeah, in the middle of the show. Yeah, that's what I, that's he what goes, I son of a bitch. And there's all this ice and fucking liquor everywhere. And then uh, Robert's in the bathroom. I'm like, hey, man, I think that guy just kicked over your drink. <laughs> Robert, Robert, like, has his little <laughs> his little thing in notes. He just slams it on the <laughs> table. And I was like, oh, my shit. It. I was like, shit's <laughs> about to go down right now. Robert's about to kill this guy. <laughs> See, I, w- I was... I was I was, I was this close to making Robert like the godfather of my child. I'm, s- I'm still on the fence. <laughs> hey, Robert! <laughs> How would you, what would you do if Tony's child got a Lego stuck in its esophagus? What would you do to get it out of his throat? He'd get his coke tutor and go, like, he'd put it in. <laughs> No, blowing, the nose is connected to the windpipe, but blowing down the nose is not going to be (laughs) effective. Robert's not here to defend himself. The windpipe's connected to the toe bone. (laughs) 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 This podcast sucks. Eventually. (laughs) We need need a theme or something. Like Like every every, something just to break up the... Nobody watches, and I don't blame them. But <laughs> I do. No, <laughs> nobody famous is on our shit. No, but when I look up podcasts to Not listen yet. to, I either look up comedy or supernatural shit. Yeah. Do you know Lore? No. Do you know Mike? Did... Or what is his name? Jim Nori? Is that his name? Yeah. The late night. He was always on. There was this channel when I was uh, when I was like twelve years old, or like not even 12 years old, I was like 8 years old, I found, like, conservative talk radio, and I would just listen to it all the time because I thought it was, like, the news. And I didn't realize that, like, 90% of it was just bitching about, like, immigrants or whatever. Yeah. And at, at late night, it was, like, Jim Nori, he would do this weird, like, UFO, sci-fi, not even sci like it was all conspiracy theories yep. and shit like that, and it was so interesting. Yeah, you should check out Lore. It's uh, it's a podcast. Lord, Lore, the, the singer. Yeah, <laughs> the one that sings about like bees and stuff. <laughs> Does she? Yeah, I think so. Probably you know, not. I like Lord. There, there's a there's a yeah, podcast I, run by a like, British guy. I like the Lord too. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> this, did you see the episode of uh, South Park about Lord? The where Randy does the Lord. singer or Lord, the, yeah, the, no. the singer where Randy is Lord. <laughs> Scott's no. dad is just. I didn't see it. They just actually a Lord impersonation. Like Lord's not in it whatsoever. <laughs> I saw, like, a Wisecrack episode review of that, and it was basically, like, how they were subliminally, or, you know, basically telling Lord, like, hey, we like the fact that you're you're a pop star, but you're not, like, a sellout piece of shit, you know, yeah. whatever. Like, we're like, just keep being yourself, but it was also a middle-aged man pretending to be Lord. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's very between the lines, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm insightful like that. But yeah, Lore is a podcast where it's like a 15 to 23 minute podcast and each episode will break down like a difference, the historical context of like of, elves and yeah, stuff like, like that, like different. Like an elf or Dracula or or just vampires in general yeah. or um, cool. werewolves and it's really like in depth and it's this really compacted, yeah, just like 20 minute podcast where it teaches you the origin of 
vampires or it'll teach you one of them was really like graphic and hard to listen to it was about uh the frontal lobotomy and the origin of that which was really what intense was um so the frontal lobotomy was a technique that was invented by a doctor whose name i'm forgetting that was used on patients in insane asylums and essentially it was to sedate the patients and what he would do was he would stick an ice pick through their eye socket and mix their brain up so that they what the fuck so that their yeah so that their frontal what? lobe was completely mixed up which sedated them but it also completely disabled them and they no longer remembered how to eat or how to function well, or how to yeah um and they Jesus fucking literally Christ. got their brain screwed. And and he would go around the country teaching insane That's asylums horrible. how to do it and his technique. Um, and he would do it on anybody, children, women, wow. men, old people. <laughs> yeah. I just like I've seen that movie. I can't. I can't say. Yeah. 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 And yeah. He, they want to use I can't them. leave evidence on recording that I paid for this movie, <laughs> but I just paid for this movie to fucking watch it because yeah, it's that good. I had to show it to my wife. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. So there, there's stuff like that on it too. There was a an episode dedicated to that. Um, there's. I want to know if you know anything about this Tony because this is one monster that I actually believe in. Pedophiles. Um, yeah. No, I don't believe in pedophiles. <laughs> what? I've never seen one. <laughs> you can't prove to me that a pedophile. Show me one. Show me one then. <laughs> I haven't seen him. You can. T I heard you say a name that doesn't prove he exists. <laughs> Bill Cosby. <laughs> I don't. I don't own a television. <laughs> but uh, the Jersey no no. Uh, have you heard of the Jersey Donald Devil? Yeah, yeah. I believe that the Jersey Devil exists. The Jersey Devil. Yeah. Have you never heard of the Jersey Devil? No. So the like Jersey me. Devil is. Uh, there is an expanse. I'm basically gonna more or less like paraphrase the podcast. Um, but the Jersey Devil is an there's an expanse of woods in New Jersey that is the largest expanse of uninhabited uh, land in America. Um, in New Jersey? Yeah, not in, in the sense of like forest, not like the Grand Canyon or something or a mountain range, but on on cultivated lands. I would uh, think that'd be in in Montana or no, Alaska it's, it's or... near New Jersey the, the forest there, the pine oh, forest there is Alaska. ridiculously massive no, I'm talking about land where you have to clear things in order to call it that's what cultivating means is you clear something <laughs> and then you <laughs> come on, Ryan <laughs> so you're telling me that Alaska, which is bigger than uh huh most of the states but do like, you have combined. to remove something to cultivate Alaska or can you just build something there I mean there's like snow and trees and shit there. but yeah. people build their houses on the snow that's a bad foundation for a house <laughs> I love how I'm just totally oh, derailing this. Alaska is by snow. <laughs> wibbling over the New Jersey. But it's it's situation. it's the largest expanse of uncultivated we woods in a supernatural America. podcast that talk about monsters and ghost stories. I'd, and shit. I'd be into that. <laughs> I would be but, so into that too. I have a couple good ones. You wouldn't want me on that podcast. <laughs> we need a skeptic. I would just just bullshit. But That's what I'm saying. Uh, those things don't work without a skeptic. That's true. That's true. Otherwise, you just get up your own ass too much. And yeah, you're like, Man, I'm going to go find him right now. But the Jersey Devil is... There are literally hundreds of sightings of this creature. And all of the uh, sightings... Not just single witnesses, but group mass groups of people seeing this creature. Why are there no pictures? Um... No there are pictures, I'm pretty sure. Are they high res? Some of them, yeah, I think. <laughs> Find me a picture. What does he look like? So it has, like, 
It has its hind legs are hooves. The wings look like bat wings, and then how do you know it's not just like a mentally disabled person that came up, devised this costume, and decides to go around? I don't scaring people. I can't prove that it exists, but enough people have witnessed it, um, and the the witnesses throughout history, not just like recently, like. The Jersey Devil goes way back. Um, have a lot of what I'm finding is sketches and art yeah, and shit. Yeah. One or two things that were set up to scare the shit out of you. But I don't know. It's it's one of those things that it's like. I think it's how how long back or how far back do the sightings go? I think. Oh, that one. That's a fucking horse. <laughs> no, that's that's not a real thing. I've seen that one. That one's hilarious. <laughs> it's just a goat. It's a goat with, with chicken. It's the goat with KFC strapped to his back. Yeah. <laughs> but the... I don't know. The, the way that it's described, the things that are in our ocean that we know about and how crazy they look, like, I don't see a reason why it doesn't... It wouldn't exist. In New Jersey? Yeah. So some, why why some, does New Jersey exclude animals? Because so it's all... Because it's racist. It's full of the Italian people. and That's true. Italians beer. are natural predators of all animals. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So is there one of these things? Um, or the, is there multiple things? If you, it, if you believe the story that it comes from, which the story that it comes from is freaking insane, uh, then there's just one. But then, no. But I don't. How think, long ago? I don't think that that's what, true. What's the the most? What's the earliest sighting? I'm pretty sure, like early 1900s. Okay, then. So it's uh, an animal that can live. Over a hundred years. Not necessarily. I'm not, say, I'm not there saying. There may be that, more than one. Yeah, I'm not saying that there's just one of these things. Cycle. I'm saying it might be a species. So it's the most endangered species that they haven't. So there are crazy years. Things. They never found a dead one. Oh yeah, they never found a dead one. They never found one feasting on like a dead fucking deer. I mean, there's shit that you can like. You, See, people I have set same, up cameras in the forest. I have that, that same can, question with Sasquatch, like. They've never I, found a dead one. I, I don't believe in Sasquatch. I but don't like, either. Those there, people are trying There are endangered hard. species that we've thought have been extinct for the past hundred years, and now we're seeing them again. Like, it's not impossible to not see something. Right. And, it, also, and it exists. I mean, the amount of, like, nature documentaries and shit, the amount of hunters that use cameras to, you know, track prey or whatever they're hunting in the woods like it, none of those would have no one would have seen it or gotten like definitive evidence that it exists like how does that not like, necessarily ever? that doesn't the amount of cameras that we have does not even come close to expanding the entirety of the world well i know that but like it's not if if this exists and this is something that people are like oh my god this exists then you would think there'd be people out there looking for it, or at least, you know, hey, maybe we'll catch... I mean, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of money to set up a camera in the forest and see And it. just hope that one of them wanders by in the largest expanse of woods in the, in the well, United States. I mean, given enough time... Given by that one years, tree. <laughs> cameras haven't been around for a hundred years. This is true. <laughs> We'll see. Why we'll see. Why holes in my logic, <laughs> Levi? We're well, talking about a fucking... Because I want to believe. We're talking about a fucking devil dragon that walks around in New Jersey, hanging out by the turnpike and eating dead... Because of the two of us, my side has the more facts. <laughs> hey, Either of you guys believe in ghosts and shit? No. Demons? Uh, I believe in demons. I don't... I don't believe or disbelieve in ghosts. I don't really have a good reason not to believe in them, but I don't have a reason to believe in them. I believe in the power of positive thinking. <laughs> I think that if you think you are possessed or you think that you're cursed, then you will be cursed. I've heard some pretty crazy first-hand stories from 
people that I really trust, like close you, friends and relatives. About you want one? About what? You, you want a new one? <laughs> about demons? <sighs> Something. Okay. I've right. seen let's, some let's shit. Let it rip. I have seen some shit, bro. All right. So I won't bore you with a lot of backstory. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of geography. Uh huh. Little little bitty bit of not actually geography. So the house I lived in, there was a stairway that led into the living room. And we had our couch set up so that it blocked like the walkway to the bathroom. So you come down the stairs and you gotta walk around this couch to go behind it and get into where the bathroom was. <coughs> so I don't know, cause I'm fucking touched by the devil. So I come down the stairs. Thank, thank you. I was gonna. Thank you. So I come down the stairs and I walk around the couch where a relative of mine is asleep on the couch. This relative is like a 10 year old girl. So I walk around the couch, behind the couch, go to the bathroom. I come out of the bathroom and as, so as soon as I have to go back up to get to my room, and I step into the living room, and as soon as my foot crossed the threshold and touched the ground, I looked over, and what I saw was my relative being suspended in the air, like at like a 45 degree angle, like if, if you were dancing with somebody and you were to dip them very, very low, like to a point that they can't possibly be standing this way on their own. That's how she was suspended. And I, like I said, I was stepping into the room and as soon as my foot touched the carpet, she was dropped onto her feet, like just let go all of a sudden and jumped back onto the couch. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? So I, I ran around and I was like, hey, I was like shaking her like, what were you just doing? What were you just doing? What the fuck did I just see right there? And like, I, I woke her up from a comfortable sleep. She was just like, what, 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 what? But yeah, I, I saw some shit. Is it possible that you were dreaming? No, because I woke everybody up because I was freaking out. How old were you at this time? Like 15. Was this pre-weed, Tony? Not really. Case closed! <laughs> <laughs> Weed! <laughs> like me, a red font. Goddamn you, Jeff yeah. Sessions. You just can't blame the whole thing on weed. I, I know what I saw. Yeah, I... As much weed as I've smoked, I've never hallucinated from weed. I don't have a reason... The, the reason why I don't, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts is because I don't see a reason why if somebody is dead and their spirit has the ability to move on, why it would remain on Earth. Why would it remain in the same place that it was yeah. killed? Or It's like, dude, like you're fucking a fucking with, ghost. Like, yeah. go hang out in Vegas or whatever. Like, go see the ocean. Like, why yeah. would you... But then again, that's assuming that we know the laws of the afterlife and what that requires. But that, that seems odd to me of, like, if your spirit has the ability to leave where, it, where your body is slumbering, why are you... Why are you on Earth? That, goes, that doesn't make sense. This goes back to the joke that I told today, which didn't really happen. I wasn't in a cemetery with my mom. But the, the point stands, like why, like, why do we always assume that if you, like, joke around or if you, like, whatever, around spirits, that they're going to be outraged and angry at you? Like, why wouldn't... Yeah, why wouldn't like, you're they, not supposed to speak ill of the dead and whatnot, like... Why wouldn't they be like, eh, hey, you fucking asshole? Like, why wouldn't they have a sense of humor about their own afterlife? Like, why would they expect you to all of a sudden act in a certain way around, yeah. you know, spirits that they know you don't know exist? Like, why would they just... I think... Okay. That... If ghosts exist... 
I personally would fall more into the category of the uh, the Chinese view of ghosts, which is that there aren't any good ghosts. So the ghosts, the, the people that are still here are here because they fucked up. They're no, not necessarily. I, they got a couple DUIs. They're, no, they're that. <laughs> That if ghosts exist, the they are charge. malevolent. Like, they're not. Like they're for good. And on that note, I'm gonna put a touch of humor into it, not because it's funny at all, but because it, it perfectly fits into what you're saying, and I find it to be hilarious. Imagine Bill Cosby as a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> He's the special pudding, little girl. <laughs> the cabinets are moving and the, pa the pots and the pans are flying across the room. Rudy! <laughs> but it's... I don't... I, I don't know. If, if ghosts exist, I don't really see why there would be a good ghost. If... Even if you are a ghost and you are good, you're not doing something that see, would scare and then, somebody. And then that's talking about good and evil. Those that's, are two very see, extremes. Well, Though you can't, not everybody that's, is a philanthropist. I don't mean to interrupt you. Not everybody no, is a philanthropist that yet, so. gives fucking millions to charity, and not everybody is Osama bin Laden. So, like, you know, how we just talked about, like, Bill Cosby. What about guys like Louis C.K. But that Malevolence didn't doesn't actually have to be hurt anybody? They just are compulsive masturbators. I, so I like, think you're misunderstanding. Is he going to hell for mean. that to be a ghost, or is he going to go on to the happily ever after and jack I, I, heaven? I think that you're misunderstanding what I what I mean. I'm not saying that they are here because they were bad on Earth. I'm saying if the, that if there is a spirit, it is here to do bad. Yeah, like it's a bad person on the inside. That it, it doesn't have a purpose other than to cause chaos. Like so does the spirit people. does the spirit come from a person? Or is it a I have no idea. Or is it a random just See, I have no idea. The thing I about the know. idea of a spirit though, is it always something inhabiting a person or is it open to inhabit animals and yeah, whatever. I don't. <laughs> so like the I, idea of a spirit. Like what, what Tony was saying, I think if you, if you like, you have to ascribe to the premise that there are good and evil people, which I don't necessarily dis ascribe to that premise. I don't really believe that some there people are, are in a gray area. Yeah, I don't. Well, even the ones that aren't in a gray, like Hitler, is widely considered the worst person ever. I think he was just a, an extremely mentally ill, charismatic person that was able to, because people aren't willing to stand up to like, holy fuck, that guy's doing some evil shit, they just kind of go along with it because they're whatever, they get spellbound or... Yeah, dude, they, that's, that's a like, lot of the culture in Europe, dude. It's is like, well, it, it, is that person evil or are they just fucked in the head? And, you know, like, yeah. chemically and, like, whatever, like, are they just, uh, something got, some wires got crossed and now they're fucked up, or it, like, I don't, I don't really believe that anyone's, like, out of the box, like, I just want to fuck up the world, I want to kill everybody. I think that some people are. I think that you have to have something wrong in your brain chemistry to be that I, type of person. Well, well yeah, yeah, but that doesn't, like, that doesn't make it okay. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's there's... still... It's not okay, it's just a consequence of a random universe that eventually, every once in a while, you're gonna get some people that are just fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's... Oh, shoot, I can't remember the guy's name. I just... Something, I... something Holmes. I, I can't... H.H. Holmes. H. Holmes? Yes, H.H. H. Holmes, thank you. Uh, the guy from... Oh, was it Chicago? Yeah. Uh, the the murder the murder mansion in Chicago. Uh, the guy that kills hundreds of people in his mansion. Um, that uh, he designed under, to kill people. Yeah, under under the guise of the World Fair. Right um, What? It's Robert Wallace. <laughs> um, his his quote when he was being when he was being led to uh, be executed was the Styles? devil has always been inside of me. I've always been evil. Killing people came as naturally to me as a poet sings. 
I was meant to do this. This is how I've been the entirety of my life. Mm -hmm. Like he, he fully admitted. Yeah, but th he, this he is grew up with who it. I was. He grew up in the construct of the devil and good and evil. So he's just yeah, he like he was taught early in that time. Everyone's either religious or a heathen. So he could. I mean, if if what I don't think what he was saying was literal. Of I am the devil. Right. He no, was no, saying he was saying the devil like, Papa, and the constructs. I, I am what I am. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was just saying I am evil, but he used the word devil. He he was saying that this is I I was born to be a killer. I couldn't help it. Sounds like textbook mental illness to me. <laughs> it sounds like someone who either something fucked up happened to, happened to him, not to be the guy defending a mass serial killer, but it sounds like yeah. something either either he got molested when he was a kid, or, or his, his saw, dad beat the shit out of him every single day, or he, yeah, he saw someone get saw murdered, something. or just something happened in his developmental stages as a child that really fucking crossed his wires, or he had some sort of hereditary thing. I don't think it's that, that simple of, like, something happened to you, therefore you did this. Well, I think some people be, are just... It could be your brain chemistry is all fucked up. There's a lot of people that go on to be great, successful comedians because their brain chemistry is just a little bit different than everybody I think, else. I think that that's true, but I also think that some, some people, people. Their, their burden in life is greater than others. Their, their, there was, and I, I wish I could remember what the publication was or where it came from, but there was a... Uh, it, it, it was a news article about a, a essentially a not yet convicted child molester, meaning that he hadn't done anything yet. Yeah. He, he had not molested yet, but he was talking to a news crew saying, that I he would molest a child. He, he was saying that I know that this is who I am on the inside. He's constructed his entire life to stay away from children at any time. He is staying as far away from it as possible because he has said, I know that this desire is in me. I know that this is something that I want to do and I can't do it because I know that it's wrong and I know that it's awful. So he has constructed his entire life to stay away from the thing that's tempting him because he knows that if he is around it, he will give in to that, it. That's insanity. That's insanity for you. I, I don't heard. think that's insanity at all. Because insanity is a lot wider than you want to think. Like, really have, really like there's that one guy, but then think about Nambla. You know about the North American Man Boy Love Association, <laughs> you, where there's a group, group of, like, there's a group of dudes that are trying to make being a pedophile legal. So, so you're comparing somebody's burden with somebody else's insanity and calling them the same thing. You can dress it all up and call it his burden and make it sound poetic. But he's doing, he's thinking about doing the same thing that these guys want to do, and they're going to make it to where he can get away with it. Imagine him at right town hall meetings. Hey, I'm here with the association to fuck little boys, and I just want to. But that's not. They're not the same thing, though. You're acting like yeah, they're the same no. thing. They, they end the up same doing thing? the same thing. Like, yeah, no, they, they're doing... In the eyes of the law, the act that they're performing is the I'm same say, thing. I'm, so, that I'm not guy, saying that they're not that doing the same thing. thing. I'm saying that the beauty and the beast kind of a way okay. is, like, You're backing out. If somebody... Okay. If somebody shoots an intruder, or somebody shoots somebody on the street, are they doing it for the same reason? I don't know, is someone intruding upon you? If you walk up to somebody and shoot somebody on the street versus somebody enters your home and you shoot them, are you doing it for the same intention or the same reason? No. You're no. still shooting somebody, you're still killing somebody, so no. why isn't that different? If you're in the street, that's you're that's in the different street. than fucking kids, man. <laughs> why is it different? Why does the context because make... Because it is. If why does the context make A good make the person logic wouldn't different? put their dick in a kid... A and a bad good person, person would. And a good person wouldn't shoot somebody because they yes, want to. You know, a good no, person no, could no. shoot somebody. Yeah. Keisha, Keisha, would you shoot somebody? Depends on the reason. Bye. See, there you go. She <laughs> said it depends. Depends on the reason. You know, it depends. But if, the if they had it coming and you had the strap, 
would you shoot somebody? You're making an argument for a question that wasn't presented to you. Now, now if you're walking through a house? The question, what, the question wasn't, is shoot, can shooting somebody be good? The question was, is the intention different in either situation? I was young and used the money. So would I shoot somebody or fuck a kid? No. I'm, you're, I'm, you're choosing, you're choosing, my lines crossed, you're, choosing you're choosing not to answer the question. I, I don't get how... Alright, okay. right, right. toss this, toss this question to me. Yeah, I mean, let me see what I got. Let's see what okay. I can muster here. If you want to shoot somebody, if somebody enters your home and you shoot them out of self-defense, or you That's walk up to somebody yes. on the street and you shoot somebody, so how is you, the intention different? Yes, so how are you equating this or, or comparing or making a parallel to Because the molesting. difference between trying to make child molesting okay and trying to keep yourself away from being a child molester, the intention is completely different. That person's intentions are good because they are trying to stop themselves from doing something that they know is wrong. For Versus somebody who is intentionally going out of their way to do so that thing that is wrong. Yeah, that they guy's are two not completely locked up. different things. No one's they, trying to lock that guy up yet. No. So then <laughs> they're different. <laughs> you said that his thing was insanity his. and that they were yeah, different. The you know, no, that guy's a great track record, you know, that you're talking about? Uh huh. Then, then they're cool. You know? Yeah. My, my point is that person is somebody that has this desire inside of them and re it has the sanity enough to know that what they're wanting to do is wrong. They're clearly not insane because they know that what they want to do is wrong and they're taking the preventative measures to go away from that. It depends that. how you define insane. Like, you, what about like you said, that? Like you said, if you know, if you know then... Yeah, he, kn he knows that what he wants to do is wrong and he's stopping himself from doing it. My, like, my that's point good. is... I think there's a wide range of insanity. I don't think that... You're either insane and you're like just batshit crazy and you can't put a cohesive sentence together, or crazy. you're, <laughs> or, or you're a normal person. I think that like everyone can have a little bit of part of them that's different, or no, that's, I that's agree with that. you know fucked up in the eyes of the law or the eyes of morality or whatever. Yeah, I think you gotta check the child molesters for like brain tumors and shit. I heard a story about a woman whose husband all of a sudden started, like, she found out that he was looking at child porn and shit. And then short, shortly after that, they found out he had a brain tumor. And he got the tumor removed. Yeah, I do know this story, yeah. And went back to normal, totally normal guy. And then all of a sudden the brain tumor came back and then he got in trouble for, I don't know if he diddled some on it or what, what he did, but. Ended up on the catch a yeah. 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 But, but so the, there, there are, there's definitely a brain malfunction there that causes you to. But I don't, but what my point in saying what I'm saying is that I don't think that that is ever, that explains every single case of it. I think that yeah. explains some of them. I think some of them do have a mental problem, but I also think that some people just have desires that, that may not be that are, legally or morally correct. I would say those desires, well, I would say those desires are a mental problem. Regardless of like that seems I don't know that seems like such an easy kind of cop out. I think the answer easy, for it. I think the easy cop out answer is that there's good people and there's evil people. Like there's just the two. Yeah. No, I don't think there's good. I don't and think honestly, there's good people and evil if, people. But I think, I think everybody though, is think, evil. Just some people are less evil. I think you acknowledge the gray area, but there's part of you, maybe from religion. Uh, it certainly was instilled in me when I was in school that there's evil out there in the world that you need to be aware of, or there's evil impulses or whatever. I think that it's all just sort of random shit that happens when you have how many billions of people in the world that some of them are going to be a little bit screwy and they're going to do shit that other people don't like. And I don't know if that's necessarily evil or it's just a consequence of there just being a shit ton of people. But I don't think I don't think that there's good and evil. I think that everybody is like what we were saying, bringing it back to the beginning. I think everybody is inherently bad. It's just some people are worse than others. We're all bad. See, but what what is worse it is worse an inherent quality or is it based on decision making? Well, I mean, we're given a certain set of fundamentals. So that that's where your good and evil comes from is this whole ABC Disney, Warner Brothers well, idea acting something of what out good is different and bad are. 
and like America in particular, we watch and consume more media and more television than any other country on the planet. So we have this whole, we have more of an emotional investment in the ideas of good and evil than people in the rest of the world. So like how we're talking about like the pedophiles and, and the, the people that are trying to fight it and the people that aren't, in Thailand, those guys don't have a Facebook profile. You just see the end result of some guy that's out there fucking kids or not. There's a lot of weird shit going on in Thailand. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's totally socially acceptable, like, in that yeah. slice of the world. Think which about is weird how history, it too. From, like, place to place. Yeah, think but, about history, too, because there yeah. been, there's been, like, homosexuality and, 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 Child fucking. You used to be able to marry Thai kids. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be able to just. I'm a you're, like still you're do. a six year old. Here, you know, I'm gonna marry you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's again. I'm not putting a construct of you. Some people are good and some people are bad. I don't think that that's true. Again, it's it's a matter of we we are all inherently born doing the wrong things and born trying to do the wrong things. The difference between us is how some people have some people have something that is considered in our eyes something that is worse than what we do that they have to fight against. And some people have very minimal things that they have to battle against. In the same way, and that's not just a morality thing, that's your lifestyle, people are born into poverty, some people are born into riches, everybody has a different status in life, everybody has a different starting point that you're starting from, but at the end of the day we're all still people and we're all still within the same constructs, we're all still fighting to be as good as we can possibly be, at least that's how you should be living your life, is to try to be the best version of you as possible. And be, But some people don't. And the difference between somebody who is better or worse is when you give up fighting against that thing that you know, you know inside of you if, that what you're doing is wrong. We all have like a moral compass. Your ideas might be different than somebody else's, but somebody, unless you have like a mental disorder, somebody has the ability, you, you know when you're doing something wrong that this is wrong, unless you've made yourself so numb to it by doing it over and over again that you no longer like register it. Yeah, <laughs> but like, you, well, you, you, regis you register this is wrong what I'm doing, um, regardless of what the matter is. And it's fighting against that that makes you better. It doesn't make you good, it makes you better. So who decides what's right and wrong? Would be my question. See, and that that's where I'm coming from is that who decides that? Because most people think in each moment two dimensionally. They think that right and wrong in the frame of this one thing. So like if you're thinking from like a financial standpoint, it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with an emotional standpoint. So if you're trying to think about like, well, what would Jesus do? You're not thinking about what would my black friend do or what would my gay friend do or what would, you know what I mean? Like it, each uh, like you, you, the idea of thinking of everything from all people's perspective at one time is a really hard concept for anybody to really grasp because most people as you're talking to them are really just two dimensional. They're only thinking about one thing at one time. So they're expressing that one thing in that one moment. But like. I don't know where I was going with that. Fuck. <laughs> well, obviously, my my answer is obvious because I'm a Christian. So the yeah. the answer comes from the way that God, as well as Christ, came and showed us by the way that they that the way that He acted, the way that Jesus acted, the way that He interacted, and the things that He said. But assuming, but. It also, it also states that no sin is greater than another in the eyes of God. So our idea of what, our idea of what this is better or this is worse, our constructions of that, it's all bad. There's not a better or worse, it's all bad. And it, so, is, wait, a matter, it is a matter of fight, 
it's still all the same struggle. You're Objection. still fighting against it. What? So you're saying, so if I take the Lord's name in vain, if I say, God damn, uh-huh. that's in the eyes yeah, of God yeah. the same as murdering 700 little children. Yes. Then God has some fucked up priorities. Yeah. No, because the idea, the idea of it is not, it's not, this is going to, you're not winning points. We're... People look at things as if you're trying to gain a status in your life. Like, if I do this good thing, that'll get me somewhere in heaven. That's stupid. That's dumb. If you, do, if you do something, you're not going to get something better. So if you do something worse, logic would state that it's not going to demote you more. If you can't gain something by doing something, then you shouldn't be able to lose something by doing something either. I read a book once. Try to get out of here. Pretty All soon. right. Yeah, everybody's leaving. There's nobody else up there. So. Oh, okay. We gotta wrap this up. All right. I read a book once. It doesn't happen that often. <laughs> I read a book once where uh, this demon escaped from hell, mm-hmm. and he talks about like he he went to, to earth to possess a body for a while, okay. and he talked about how hell isn't actually a place where you are tortured. It's a place where when your soul leaves your body, you're basically just a cloud of energy. So negative energy goes to this like negative pool. And if you feel bad when you die about the life you lived, you're going to float into that negativity. And you stay there and you burn off all that negative energy. The power of positive energy. Exactly. What I said from the beginning. So you burn all that shit off. And then everybody, he says, basically by the time they're, they're worked through their shit, they've thought through everything they had to. They're not negative anymore. They just naturally go over to the positive side. So all things, everybody goes to heaven eventually. But if you feel shitty for having been a fucking shithead your whole life, you're going to hell for a while and you're going to feel bad about it. You're going to burn that shit off. But what about the person that is mentally disabled and doesn't realize that the things that they're doing is worse than something else? That's right. Oh. I don't know. I mean, there has to be some level of clarity to it. Next time on the Toddcast podcast. Right. (laughs) Dive we drink some Kool-Aid. crazy Kool-Aid on this we show, folks. We debate abortion. <laughs> Morality. Tune in. Complex that we're... Uh, so, uh, yeah, we do this every Monday. Every Monday, folks. Don't, don't watch. It's, it's yeah, awful. Yeah, I jerk them all off. When need to take we're going to try to convince Jeff Styles to bring more of this beautiful... What did he give me more? You should have fucking came. Dude, I gave him like, like 6,000... Thanks, like, guys. Good night, everybody. See you Monday. We love you all. I guess.